Yeah. The rewards of self-belief have turned me into an addict. Yeah. Girls cheating, being hoes has turned me into a savage. Well, Before I knew I could poke here with another video for you today. And today we're going to be playing some more Dream Daddy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like these. And yeah, let's get right into it. Fucking Bob, man. Oh, it stopped. Bunch of Z's. Let's go. All right, guys. So we last left off on, I believe, after cooking some dinner with uh, Amanda, and her going to start arguments on the internet. So yeah, let's go ahead and continue. I believe this should be the day of uh, the cookout. Maybe. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never ever let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so, are you excited for the cookout today? Uh, excited to beef up my gr uh, grilling skills. If there's food, I'm excited. If there's food, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to party. <laughs> yeah, those are bad. I mean, they're they're okay, guys. Come on. Which means there are more for me. Aww. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. <laughs> Dad. Your beautiful work of a work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Huh. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early. Just because you said that. I head out the door and the man reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it, <laughs> if it doesn't involve a grill. <laughs> I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children to run through the sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hi. This is Christian and Christy. They're twins. You already have a Chris. They stare creepily and say nothing. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? <laughs> ah. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, there's... Where is Krish? Maybe Mary put him in the crib. Joseph and Mary. Chris. Christy. Christian. Krish. Just, just, just name one of them Jesus already. God. <laughs> Wait, where is... Kr <laughs> oh, no. It's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? I'm fucking sorry. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, oh how could I uh, forget my lovely wife, Mary? Hey. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? Mm. I'll have to go look for him. Oh. What? You'll have to. Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Ego, and his daughter, Amanda. Ah. I take your hand, but I have a glass of wine. That I need to tend to. Damn, okay. I love her. <laughs> nice to uh, meet you, Mary. For the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God. This is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It all takes... Uh, it takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in the new city. <laughs> my wife is a wonderful sense of humor. But please... You two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. Have you met Matt yet? Who? Oh. 
Oh. Hey Matt, come here. Uh, come meet our new neighbors. This is Ego and Amanda. Oh well, goddamn, Matt. How how you doing, bro? Hi hi hey hi. How you doing? <laughs> Amanda and I both give him a wave. Uh, hey, I'm Matt. Nice to meet you too. Matt runs the coffee shop down the street. He bakes a mean carrot cake. Matt grins sheepishly. Sheepishly. He also knows everything about music. His record collection takes up a whole wall of his house. That's me, the music guy. That's a bit of an understatement. He also used to be in. Uh, ah, ha, ha, I'm just the music guy. Always talk. Uh, always stoked to discuss music, uh, tunes, and stuff. That's so cool. I love music. Matt's ears seem to perk up. Oh, yeah. What kind of stuff do you listen to? Dad rock, top tier stuff. Almost exclusively songs about being sad. <laughs> uh, damn. I must say, six, yeah. If it forces me to think about my own personal so shortcomings or understand that feeling sad is as unique as it is universal and that there is a certain comfort in knowing that, then I'm all over it. Dude, me too. Matt gives me a high five. Hey, let's go, bro. <laughs> hey. Cool. All right. Matt stands there for a second. So, oh. right. Cool. Hey. Well, I uh, be making the rounds. Feel free to stop by later. Aww. Is he afraid of people as you are? He might be. Hmm. Let me introduce you to Damien. Joseph beckons a tall man in the gothic attire over to the conversation. Good eve, friends. Oh. Damien, this is our new neighbor, Ego. Ah, so lovely to meet you. Damien shakes my hand and then bows. Alright, Dracula, let's go. If you're ever interested, it would bring me great pleasure to host you for a spot of afternoon tea. Wow, uh, yeah, that sounds rad. Uh -huh. Splendid. Well, I must be off. Perhaps our paths shall cross, uh, shall cross again. I can't read. Damn, what a classy dude. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you enjoy, hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick out some of the deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with, with, baked, uh, with baked goods. Ugh, I don't want to have to make friends. Aww. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to do pleasantries. Mm. Dad. Ugh. They're going to talk about weather. <sighs> go. Do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Oh, it's the coffee guy. Or is he the music guy? He's the music guy. Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? That mysterious goth guy. Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know, Craig. But wait a second, all of these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Uh, Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Burger time. <laughs> burger time or I, I'm considering Matt, Hugo, and Craig or burger time. Honestly. I'll go Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Okay. Matt, Hugo, uh, Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of the time and place. And to try and make, take something you like, say, the Rocco period, and compare it to two postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which the work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking, about, uh, talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Kind of listening on my and Hugo. Oh. That kind of comparison just eliminates the reason art movements are so important in the first place. Hmm. 
you're not wrong, but I think there's no harm comparing one work of art to another. You could definitely say one painting is better than another if you're evaluating technical skill from a purely formalist standpoint. If I showed you a Matisse and then something by the Dutch masters, which one would you say shows more technical, uh, technical prowess? Mm. I'm so lost right now. I shoot a worried glance over to Craig who returns it. Uh. Well, sure, you could say that Dutch masters were technically more skilled, but I would argue that while Dutch masters were better painters, Matisse had be uh, better paintings overall. Hmm. Well, that's pretty subjective. How do you mean? Uh, well, the painting of the guy with the apple in front of his face is pretty nice. Matisse rocks. Mm -hmm. That's a Magritte. Right. Art. Sorry. You're fine, dude. <sighs> we were just discussing the importance of context when talking about artwork. Listen, all I asked was if you liked Van Gogh or Picasso better. Um, Hugo throws up his hands in frustration. <laughs> well, what the fuck do you mean? Do I like Picasso or Van Gogh? But they represent two completely different art movements. How could I possibly choose between the thick, creamy impasto of post-impressionism and the abstractionist beauty of cubism? Uh, I'd have to say Van Gogh over Picasso, honestly. And, and the reason is because, you know, Starry Night. Man, that's all way above my head. Mm -hmm. Me too. Hey, uh, <laughs> it's all good, man. The cool thing about art is we all perceive it differently. A single piece could have a totally different effect on each person that looks at it. And that's awesome. Indeed. Ah. Just one minute about that. Hugo, please. Ah. Sorry, sorry. I get really fired up about art stuff. Ego, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everyone's been super friendly. Hey. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and, an and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Hey, uh... <laughs> what is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you looked cute in it. Oh. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. Nice. Am I cool now? Oh man, you look cute. <laughs> the girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before you put it on. Hey. <laughs> there you go, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita. <laughs> Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old co uh, college friend and uh, your teacher? Ah. Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Yes. Yep. You still going to get me that overdue in turn paper? Ah. <laughs> Great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. Let's go. She learned that finger guns move for me. I'm very proud. Mm -hmm. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Sweet man, Shago. Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. What? Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Mm -hmm. Ernest Ernest Hemingway. Vega uh, well I mean you're an English teacher for a reason. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Hey, yeah. Man, I do not envy Hugo. Last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. And nearly burned down half the yard. Jesus. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then they spread down to my lawn and burn down half of my yard, too. I don't know. Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. Hey, everyone. Sorry about that. Hugo, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Well, he's definitely a teenager. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Doesn't matter. Oh. Ernest. 
Okay, okay. I'm in 8th grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah. Good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for f the failing economy. Me too, Ernest. Me too. Ouch. Uh. Ernest. Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts the earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. Ah. I'm so sorry. He's having a really tough time. I'd imagine. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. Hmm. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Hmm. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. Oh. See, that right there. You can't say that. I don't know. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be cool dads? I uh, don't know. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we become the machine we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. Um, as much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Hmm? Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. But it'd be nice to have it both ways. That's true. The thing with being a parent is, you can't be overbearing, but you can't be too lenient as well. You can be a cool dad, but you also have to be respected by your children. And I think as long as you talk to your kids to make sure that they understand where you're coming from and what you mean for them, you know, and have that open dialogue with them, you should be okay. And you can't really be unfair to them without justifying it, you know what I mean? Either way. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Mm. Don't let us eat up your time, Ego. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Uh, I'm gonna go get a burger for now. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese onto patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Oh. You probably didn't know this, Ego, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. I can tell. But he's ungrillievable. <laughs> God damn it, Brian. I've tried to get on this level, but I just can't catch up. Hey. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. <laughs> Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the artist? Hey. I've never seen him make a mistake. <laughs> ah. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> All of the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. <laughs> Fuck you guys, man. I swear to God. <laughs> Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Yeah. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Uh -huh. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Oh. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Oh. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all of the kids. If she decides to get into babysitting game, she'd really make a killing. Oh. 
Hey, why don't you add us all on the dad book? Dad book? Oh. Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Oh. For sure. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, pops. I'll, I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmencita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. God fucking damn. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Well, I felt like I was at a networking event. I'm going to get LinkedIn notifications out of this. I just know that. You don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you? Not when their affection jams up my inbox, metaphorically speaking. Hmm. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on the dad book. Maybe I will. If I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, dad. Nice. Oh. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah. I'm going out with some friends. Oh. Hmm. Is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Hmm. You got it. And be careful. Yeah. I will. Make good choices. Oh. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Hmm. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No. I've never done that and I will never do that. Hmm. Okay, do you have plans f for tonight? I, uh, my plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... I'm gonna work on some stuff. You know, that stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive, it, uh, drive off into the night. I really hope, I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary and mashed potatoes. With rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although, I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food of real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind, and also one episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was all about. It was just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now. In which case, I hope she doesn't respond soon because I definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again and my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay. See, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. <laughs> now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman's Miho are not only assaging, uh, assaging my anxiety, but possibly exasperating it with all the yelling. So I keep pacing around the house waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who she was even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who was Emma P? I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but to think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh, thank God, it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. So. Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Ugh. Ugh, yeah. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Oh, whoops. I guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk to her room. Amanda, Anne. Hmm. 
Oh, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Hmm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I have a right to be concerned. You're my only daughter. Well, I can't give you a play-by-play -play of everything I do all the time. I'm 18. You shouldn't even be giving me a curfew in the first place. I sit down on the couch and put my hand in my hands. I feel very tired of all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Mm. Alright. I'm gonna go to bed now. When I close the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? And that was an eventful day for sure. A lot of socializing, a lot of uh, getting to know the neighbors. And, you know, that scary situation with Amanda at the end. Which is unfortunate. I can understand why, you know, teens, of course, lose track of time. They won't respond to text, all that, you know. Not going to get into, you know, the specifics of all that <laughs> now, but... You know, I understand both sides. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you guys are enjoying the Dream Daddy series, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, remember to hit that link in the description below to uh, be notified whenever I do go live on Twitch. And yeah, we'll keep this up and uh, we'll definitely be posting another episode of Persona 4 Golden soon. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. And yeah. Till next time, guys. I'll see you later.